Okay, this is going to be Joe Biden's choices for SCOTUS, the three top uh, women uh, that he's got there. They've got three cards for each of them and then some cards for Kamala. So I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. Okay, so we're going to look into this and see what are his choices. It looks like the top three, uh, as of uh, a couple days ago anyway, were uh, D.C. Circuit Court Judge uh, Katanji Brown Jackson. So what about her? Then we've got uh, the California Supreme Court Justice Leandra Kruger, California Supreme Court Justice Leandra Kruger, and then the U.S. Uh, South Carolina U.S. District Court Judge, uh, just a judge, this one, uh, J. Michelle Childs. So what about them? So here we go. This is Katanji Onika Brown Jackson. Now in 1970, Katanji Onika Brown was born on September 14th, so she's Virgo. And she was born in Washington, D.C., but she was raised down the coast in Miami. And her father was an attorney for the Miami-Dade School Board, while her mother was a school principal. Now both her parents were graduates of historically black uh, colleges and universities. And in 1988, Katanji graduated high school, 1988. So in 1992, she studied government at Harvard University and graduated with an A.B. magna cum laude. While there, she led protests against a student who was displaying a Confederate flag from his dorm window. And also, an uncle, uh, one of her uncles, was sentenced to life in prison on a nonviolent uh, cocaine conviction. Now, years later, she persuaded a law firm to take his case uh, pro bono, and uh, President Obama eventually uh, commuted his sentence. Another uncle served as Miami's police chief. Now, Miss Brown spent a year and a half as a staff reporter and researcher for Time Magazine. Uh, then she attended Harvard Law School. Remember, she graduated from Harvard University. Now she's going to Harvard Law School and was a supervising editor of the Harvard Law Review. In 1996, she graduated Harvard Law with a Juris Doctor Cum Laude. And Katanji was a law clerk for the U.S. District of Massachusetts Court Judge, for a U.S. District of Massachusetts Court Judge. Uh, this year, she married a student. Uh, she married a student. She married a surgeon, also, and uh, that was Dr. Patrick G. Jackson. They have two daughters. Her husband's brother is the brother-in-law of the wife of former Speaker uh, Paul Ryan. Now, 1997 to, to 1998, Katanji clerked for a judge of the U.S. Court of Appeals. Then she spent about a year in private practice at a Washington, D.C. law firm. Then 1999, she clerked for Supreme Court Justice Stephen uh, Breyer, whom she may replace. And um, 2000, Jackson worked in uh, private legal practice. In 2003 to 2005, Katanji served as an assistant special counsel as an assistant federal department public defender to the United States Sentencing Commission before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. Wow, that's a mouthful. Now, in 2007, she was an appellate litigator at a, um, yeah, at a private firm, and then in 2009, President Obama nominated her as vice chair of the U.S. Sentencing Commission. In 2010, she was confirmed for that position. 2013 to 2021, she's been a district judge on the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, and since 2016, she's been a member of the Harvard Board of of overseers very interesting okay so here we go this will be for Katanji Brown Katanji Brown but first just have a moment of meditation okay Katanji Brown Katanji Brown three cards for Katanji Brown uh, of course, we want to know if she's going to be selected uh, to replace uh, Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer. But um, if the cards can tell more than that in just three cards, that'd be great. So Katanji Brown, her, wow, these cards don't want to work today. If they're small, so they're a little hard for me to, to um, shuffle. Katanji Brown for... Stephen Breyer. Katanji Brown, will you replace Stephen Breyer? Katanji Brown, will you replace Stephen Breyer? Or anything, cards can let us know. Katanji Brown, will you replace 
Stephen Breyer. Three cards. Okay. One, I'm not going to take those cards. No. Two. And three. Katanji Brown. Well, you replace Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer. Katanji Brown. First card, then, is the Emperor. Okay, so this is a good card. This is a yes card. The Emperor is um, all-knowing and um, and very powerful. Second card up for Katanji Brown. Ah, is the Devil. Okay, so the Devil. This is uh, you know, being tied to uh, lesser intentions. It's a no card. And the third card is the Fool starting on a new journey. So let's take a look at this. So we're asking if uh, Katanji Brown will be, replace uh, Stephen Breyer on the, uh, if she'll be the new Supreme Court Justice, or anything that the cards can tell us about her. And so the, what the cards lay out is that um, is this Emperor card. And for me, uh, this uh, right away seems to be um, Katanji Brown. For some reason, I feel like that's Katanji Brown. But then the next card in this is the Devil card, which is tied to lesser intentions. So I wonder if there won't be something there that um, that comes up in her in in the research or the conference or whatever it is they do before they make that decision. So that's a pretty strong no card. And then the last card is a new journey. So this would say to you that there's some new journey coming up, but I'm going to say it's not going to be on the Supreme Court. Okay. Okay, so this is about Leandra Kruger. So in 1976, Leandra Reed Kruger was born on July 28th, so she's a Leo. And she's from Glendale, California, but she grew up in South Pasadena. Now, both parents, both parents were physicians. Her mother immigrated to the U.S. from Jamaica, and her late father was an American Jew whose parents had immigrated to the U.S. from Europe, so both physicians. Uh, Leandra attended Polytechnic Private Day School, and she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree, magna cum laude, from Harvard University. But she graduated with a Juris Doctor degree from Yale Law, where she served as editor-in-chief of the Yale Law Journal and was the first black woman elected to that position. In, two, in 1999, she entered, uh, interned at the L.A. U.S. Attorney's Office, and in 2000, she worked as a summer associate at a private firm. Now, 2001, she was an associate at another private firm, and then 2002, she worked, and this is a long title here, she uh, worked as a law clerk for a U.S. Court of Appeals judge for the District of Columbia Circuit. And then 2003, Kruger then clerked for a U.S. Supreme Court justice. Uh, 2004 to 2006, Leander was an associate at a private Washington, D.C. firm. And then 2007, she was a visiting assistant professor at the University of Chicago Law School. Then 2007 to 2013, Ms. Kruger was an assistant to the U.S. Solicitor General and the acting principal deputy solicitor general. She argued 12 cases before the U.S. Supreme Court and worked on dozens more, including the landmark case defending the Affordable Care Act. Now, 2010 to 2011, she served as an acting principal deputy solicitor general of the United States and worked with the Office of Legal Counsel. And in 2013, Ms. Kruger became a deputy assistant Ger attorney general at the U.S. Department of Justice's Office of Legal Counsel. Uh, 2014, the California governor announced her appointment to the California Supreme Court, which was publicly praised by then attorney general and the solicitor by the then attorney general and the solicitor general, also a former acting S solicitor general and a former Solicitor General. Wow. Okay, now 2015, Leandra was sworn in as the court's second African-American woman justice and, at 38 years old, was the youngest appointee to the court in recent years and the third youngest appointee to the court ever. And then Leandra's married to a partner at a private firm in San Francisco. They have two young children. She was the first member of the California Supreme Court to give birth while serving on the bench. I mean, not at the bench, but you know what I mean. This one on uh, Leandra Kruger. Leandra Kruger, Leandra Kruger, Leandra Kruger. Okay, this is going to be Leandra Kruger, Leandra Kruger, Leandra Kruger. For the replacement of Stephen Breyer. Whatever the cards can tell us. Okay, three cards. One, two, Three. Leandra Kruger. Cards, what can you tell us? Will she replace Stephen Breyer as Supreme Court Justice? The first card out of the rank is the Ace of Pentacles. A lot of value, big offer of value, and this is a, a yes card, but it doesn't mean that that's the answer to the question yet. The next card then 
is the Knight of Cups. So this is the Knight is the uh, fighter of the royal suite. He's the guy who's going to take the the charge he's been given, which in this case is a big cup of compassion, and make sure that it reaches its destination. And the last card is going to be this Ten of Rods, which is a heavy load to push forward. So let's read these together for um, Leandra Kruger. So she has she starts out with a big offer of value. So she's obviously uh, a worthy in this mix. The Knight of Cups is bringing a huge cup of compassion, but this knight does seem somewhat hesitant. And then the last card we get into this Ten of Rods kind of tells me this will be a hard road to hoe, and I don't think she's going to make it. Okay, this is Juliana Michelle Child. She goes by J. Michelle Childs. And in 1966, Juliana Michelle Childs was born on March 24th, so she's an Aries, and from Detroit. As a teen, her father, uh, a police officer, died. And her mother, a personal manager, moved to South Carolina because of the crime in Detroit. Uh, then, at the University of South Florida, so that's where she went to school, uh, Juliana was inspired to be to pursue a legal career after participating in a mock trial uh, program. In 1988, she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in Management Cum Laude from FSU, Florida State University. Now, in 1991, she received a Juris Doctor from the University of South Carolina School of Law, also a Master of Arts degree in Personal Personnel and Employment Relations from the University of South Carolina School of Business. Then, until 2000, Ms. Childs worked for a private South Carolina law firm as a summer associate. And in 1992, she became an associate attorney. Now, in 2000, what happened is she became the firm's first African-American partner and had expertise in employment and labor law for employers, okay, for employers, uh, against race and gender-based discrimination efforts to unionize, etc. Then worked for the South Carolina State Government for six years, also 2000 to 2002. She was Deputy uh, Director of the Division of Labor with the South Carolina Department of Labor Licensing and Regulation. Now, 2002 to 2006, she was a commissioner on, the South, Carolina, on South Carolina's Workers' Compensation Commission. Then elected by the South Carolina General Assembly to become a county circuit court judge and became the chief judge for general sessions of South Carolina's uh, criminal court. Then, 2009, President Obama nominated her to the U.S. District Court for the, South, for the District of South Carolina. 2010, she was confirmed by the Senate as a U.S. District Judge for South Carolina, and Ms. Childs was elected to the American Law Institute. Now, 2016, she received her LLM, what's an LLM? It's a Master of Laws in Judicial Studies from Duke University School of Law. Uh, 2020, Childs was elected as a chair of the Judicial Division of the American Bar Association. In 2021, uh, Biden's transition team received a letter encouraging her nomination to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. The president announced her as his nominee, which was sent to the Senate and is now pending before the Senate Judiciary Committee. So right now that's pending. And then she was suggested as a Supreme Court uh, nominee. So that isn't even resolved. And now she's uh, uh, suggested for the Supreme Court. In 2022, the White House has stated that she is being considered for a nomination to the U.S. Supreme Court. And Republican Lindsey Graham added his support. Is that good or bad? And now... We'll do J. Michelle Childs. J. Michelle Childs, will you be the one to replace Briar? Three cards. One, two, three. J. Michelle Childs, will you be the one to replace Briar? Again, we get the Ace of Pentacles, so lots of value. Here we get the Four of Cups, being offered something you don't quite want, Cups of Compassion, and then uh, Seven of Pentacles, wondering if you've done enough. Well, this isn't clear that it would be her. She comes up with a great big offer of value, that's what she is. Maybe something in that investigation is going to mean that she's offered something she's not quite sure she wants to take. And then the last card here, being uh, the Seven of Pentacles, is looking like you haven't quite done enough. So I'm going to say no. So it might must be some other candidate, or it could be completely wrong about everything. Okay, so now we're going to look at Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, what do you have going on? 
just going to do six cards, and if it looks promising, we'll do another four to make it a full Celtic cross. But we'll start out just going after a dyadic cross for Kamala Harris. Six cards to start with. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay, six. Kamala Harris. What can the cards tell us about you, Kamala? Signifier card. Ah, the devil card. So being chained to lesser intentions. That's the signifier card. Challenge to that is the emperor. Okay, that's the top job. So this, uh, these lesser intentions are challenged by the top job. I wonder if she's just too litigious to be uh, this uh, person, the next president. The base of this reading, then, is the Knight of Cups. And the Knight of Cups is the fellow who uh, does the court's bidding. He's been given a cup of compassion. So the base of this reading put, places her as kind of this Knight of Compassion. But this signifier card of uh, being in, uh, um, tethered to lesser intentions, for me, that just speaks to maybe the revenge she may want to get for what was done to this country and uh, the emperor being the top job. Passed to the or could be uh, Trump himself. Uh, the contempt she has for him. The uh, past of this reading is this Ten of Rods, a hard uh, bundle to carry. You know, rods are, are plans or actions or movement forward. And the past of this seems to have been a really heavy load. The sky of this reading is moving out of troubled waters, swords. So swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And the Six of Swords is typically moving uh, your yourself uh, out of troubled waters. And then the likely outcome of this, with this Eight of Cups, is having to leave something behind of a lot of emotional importance to you, which could be that presidential job. So for the first part of this, I think we'll go ahead and take it four more cards, but the first part of this is signified by the, the Devil card, Chained to Lesser Intentions. I just really think that that's her feelings about what... Um, uh, about about the previous administration. This Emperor card is a challenge to that, and for me this could either be the previous administration or it could be the, be the job of the presidency, but whatever it is, either one of those is challenging those feelings that she has, uh, whether they're uh, uh, valid feelings or not. She comes into this really as a knight of compassion. I mean, she wants to compassionately get this thing done because she feels is the importance of it. However, with this Ten of Rods, is a, there's a lot of issues to carry into this that uh, can hamper her. With the Six of Swords uh, above here, this is moving out of troubled waters. And I wonder what that means. Some people have suggested that she might be a candidate for the Supreme Court. And then the uh, likely outcome of the whole thing with this Eight of Cups is having to leave something behind. And for me, that's her having to leave uh, the presidency behind. The next six cards, the next uh, four cards, let's see what they tell for Kamala Harris. The self of that question, what's in the stars for Kamala Harris? Well, this is the Ten of Swords, and this is the end. This is the, the complete end. So I say that doesn't mean the presidency, and I don't think it means the Supreme Court. The environment that that's in is the star. So this is hope. And the star uh, just tells us that regardless of these negative cards, there's a lot of value in this person. The uh, hopes and the fears then with this Queen of Cups. So she's gone from being a Knight of Cups up to a Queen of Cups. So she really has a mission to uh, to accomplish being this Queen of Cups. And then the final outcome for that, for Kamala Harris, is this Page of Rods. Now she's reduced down to a page with a message. Okay, the very lowest of the court cards with a, 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 a message or an idea or a movement forward. This is what she is. So I just kind of feel like maybe she won't be president or on the Supreme Court. But that's what I get for Kamala Harris. Well, that took a minute. Uh, so, I don't know, what do you think? I kind of like what, how that came out. And uh, the cards for Kamala were interesting. Well, I'm Mark. This has been My Journey Through Tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.